From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Listen to the word, the words of life from God. To you and me, pilgrims on a journey to his heart. There is no place like home. When I think of this phrase, I, I think I think of um, Dorothy uh, from The Wizard of Oz, okay? There's no place like home. You see, she ran away from home because she was all upset with everyone, you know, at home. So she said she was going to run away from home. And then the wizard, the magician, came and she saw this, this, this um, globe. And she saw her, her Auntie Yam was sick and she was holding her chest. In. And so she decided she was going to run back home. She was going to go back home. But when she got back home, well, things were a little strange when she got back home. Uh, you know, the, the house went, you know, and she ended up in the Wizard of Oz, you know, the Land of Oz, right? And all she wanted to do was find her way home to her family. There is such a good feeling to be home. While I was in the Holy Land, it was, it was amazing. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it was amazing. I had an awesome time. I walked in Jesus' footsteps. It was just miraculous. And you guys will hear more about it soon. <laughs> and after a while, though, well, I'll admit it, I started getting a little homesick. I missed my, my children. I missed my husband. Um, it was only 10 days, but I still got you know, a little homesick. I wanted to come home. I wanted to share with you guys, my family, you know, and be with my, my family at home. I made a bunch of friends there, you know. It was wonderful to walk in Jesus' footsteps, as I said, but there was still that feeling of wanting to be home. There truly is no place like home. But, there's a big but, there are some, and then they, you know, they're lost. They think they can't come home. They figure that they've done so much in their lives, or didn't hurt so many people in their lives, or whatever it was, that they can't come back home. They can't go back to a place where, you know, to be accepted back into the family. They think that there is no place for them at the table. They just, you know, want their lives to be forgiven. They want to come back home. It can be that way with our spiritual lives. Think about it. Yeah. We don't do the things that we used to do. Uh, we don't feel God's presence anymore or hear his voice. We feel we have wandered too far or have done too many bad things in our life that God would never accept us back. Oh, how wrong we are when we feel that, when we think that. There is always a way home no matter what we've done. We are continuing our pilgrimage, our Latin pilgrimage, to the cross. During this journey, as I told you, the remote must be feel along with us, <laughs> and as we look at her sermon series, The Way. She's pretty cool. She puts stuff up there, and you can use your own imagination with it, but she gives you the thinking stuff, the pondering stuff. I like that. Well, we're going to look at different ways, so to speak, or paths that, that we take in our lives. And my prayer that as we journey together on this, that we will help each other and those in our lives find the way. We began our pilgrimage on Ash Wednesday when we talked about you know the way back and about how Ash Wednesday is kind of like making a U-turn, making a U-turn, coming back towards God, back to the relationship that God intended for the very beginning of time. We've talked about the wandering way, and, and you know, we're walking the mazes 
in our lives, we're trying to find our way home, we're trying to find our way out, and slam, we hit a wall. Walking through that phase. Hmm. We talked about the way around when Erica told us that we need to follow God's plan for our lives. Even if it means making our way around the people that love our most. We also talked about the highways and we realized that we have a higher calling in life. We do. God has put a higher calling on our life and that we are to think on a higher ground, so to speak, not the lower ground of the world. But when we wander off and do our own thing, as I said, there is a way home. Is there still a place at the table for us? The way home. Have you ever walked a labyrinth? Who here has, has walked a labyrinth? Wow, we need to do some wireless walking. We're going to make one out in the parking lot or something. We'll pay one in the parking lot and you can drive over it. A labyrinth is a place you start at the beginning and you walk around. Usually it's a circle, sometimes different. Walk around, walk around, walk around. Now there are no corners or bumps or anything. There's only one way you can go. And as you follow, you end up in the center. Now, as you're circling, you're praying prayers for others, so just magnifying God. Whatever it is the Spirit tells you to do as you're walking around the circle until you get the center. Now, when you're in the center, there's usually a, a place to sit. And you can sit there and contemplate. It's like you finally get home. You get into the center. And you, pray, you give praise to God, prayers for Him, prayers for others. Then you work your way back out of the labyrinth, the same way you went in. And it's almost as if God is sending you out refreshed and renewed, and you wind back up to where you started and you step out. God is sending you out to share love, joy, and hope with others. He's sending you forth renewed and fed and ready to be a witness in the world. But there are so many that I think, you know, they can't enter the center, okay? Because of their life, the way they, they led their life, or the things they've done, you know. Heck, even some of their own family members don't think that, you know, that they're accepted and they've gone too far to be helped. But beloved, I am here to tell you that there is no way or no thing that God cannot redeem. You know, I need to say this again. There is no one, no thing, no way, no situation that God cannot redeem. There is a way home for all who are looking. As it says, knock and the door will be open. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it will be given. Beloved, there is a way home. Let me read you a story from the Bible. A story about a son who ran away from home. The prodigal son. Then he said, Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, the younger of them inappropriately asked his father, for, Father, give me my share of the property that falls to me. So he divided up the estate between the two of them. A few days later, the younger son gathered everything that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he wasted his fortune on reckless and immoral living. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in the country, and he began to do without and be in need. So he went and forced himself on one of the citizens of that country who sent him out to the fields to feed pigs. He would have gladly eaten the pods the pigs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger, and no one was giving him 
But when he finally came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough food? While I'm dying here of hunger, I will get up, I will go to my father, I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, and of heaven and in your sight, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just treat me like one of your hired men. So he got up, came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, I love this. His father saw him and was moved with compassion for him. And he ran and he embraced and he kissed his son. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven in your, and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, quickly bring out the best robe for our guest of honor and put it on him. Give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet. And bring a fatted calf and slaughter it. Let us invite everyone and feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was gone as dead, is alive again. He was lost and he has been found. So they began to celebrate. There is no one, nothing ever, situation that can keep us from the love of God. Nothing. That scripture is all about coming home. Now the son thought that he had done so much wrong that the father wouldn't accept it back. We may think that we have done too much wrong and won't be accepted back by our heavenly father at times. But what happened? The father saw him from a distance. He was probably watching every single day out in the front, hoping, without, you know, without hope, that his son, who had a glimpse of his son in the horizon, hoping to catch the glimpse of his son's, uh, his son's shadow, waiting to find his way back home. And when he saw his son, his figure on the horizon, he was overjoyed at the sight. His son, who was lost, had come home. He ran to him, he embraced him. Now, the son was trying to tell him how unworthy he was, but the father didn't hear the words. Uh, it is more like he ignored the words than didn't hear the words. And he celebrated because his lost son, his son who spent all of his money on wild living, had come home. He came home. Now I want to stop one minute and talk about the father's reaction to the seeing the sun on the horizon. He hadn't even got to the front door yet, the sun. Maybe not even on his father's property. And he saw him and was overjoyed. This reaction is much like, okay, the same reaction we hear in two parables that come right before the prodigal son. Just, you know, they all go together. Listen to the reaction, okay? Now, tax collectors and sinners were gathered all around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them a parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it over his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Another one. Suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and she loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sin of repentance. There's always a way home. The door is always open. And all who come may enter in through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I think that Jesus was trying to tell the people in 
have, it continues until now because the Bible is a living, breathing thing. You are never too lost. You are never too far away. You never do too much wrong to be welcomed by God. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to wear the right clothes or say the right words. All you have to do is come. As a matter of fact, we are seen on the horizon and Jesus runs to us, throws his arms around us, and welcomes us home. Don't never give up. Ever give up on that lost and wandering one. It is in Jesus that we are welcomed home to a place that's more beautiful than any other place we've ever seen in our lives. We're invited into the heart of God through Jesus. Jesus has been with us from the beginning to the end and everywhere. On Tuesday night at our Bible study, um, watched the YouTube video. It was by the woman who played the, the wife in War Room, right? She played the wife. And she goes around and she gives these talks about Jesus. Did you know that if you look in the Bible, God's Word, we can see Jesus in action from Genesis to Revelation. He is pictured and prophesied in all 66 books of the Bible. Also, you know, they're trying to show us the way home. Of course we know who I am. I had to look at this up. Okay, so here we go. I'd like to end my sermon with this. <laughs> this is different than the one I gave you. Jesus through the Bible. Genesis. Creator, promised redeemer. Exodus, the Passover lamb. Oh, Leviticus, high priest. Numbers, water in the desert. He's a cloud by day and the pillar of night. Deuteronomy, he is Moses' voice. He's the city, our refuge. Think about it. This is all about Jesus and about how he is for us. Joshua, commander of the army of the Lord, he is salvation's choice. Judges, he delivers us from injustice. Ruth, he's our kinsman redeemer. First Samuel, all in one, he is the prophet, priest, and king. Second Samuel, king of grace and love. First Chronicles, son of David that is coming to rule. Second Chronicles, the king who rules eternally. Ezra, priest proclaiming freedom, true and faithful scribe. Nehemiah, the one who restores what is broken. He's the builder of broken walls and lives. Esther, protector of his people. Job, mediator between God and man, the timeless redeemer. Psalms, our song in the morning and in night. Proverbs, our wisdom. Ecclesiastes, our meaning for life. Time in the season. Song of Solomon, author of faithful love. He is the beautiful bridegroom. Isaiah, the suffering servant. He's the prince of peace. Jeremiah, the weeping Messiah. Lament lamentations, he assumes God's wrath for us. Ezekiel, son of man. Daniel, the stranger in the fire with us. He is the fourth man in the midst of our fiery furnace. Hosea, faithful husband even when we run away. Let me say that again. Faithful husband even when we run away. Joel, he is sending his spirit to his people. He is the spirit's power. Amos delivers justice to the oppressed. Obadiah, he is Lord and Savior. Jonah, the greatest missionary. He is the great foreign missionary that takes the word of God into all the world. Micah, he cast our sins to the sea of forgetfulness, the promise of peace. Nahum, proclaims future world peace we cannot even imagine. Habakkuk, he is the watchman that is ever praying for revival of his people. Zephaniah, he is the Lord mighty to save. Haggai, he restores our worship. He restores our lost heritage. Ze Zechariah, he is our fountain. Malachi, he is the son of righteousness with healing on his wings. And that's just the Old Testament, New Testament. Mark, he is the miracle worker. Luke, the Messiah who is deliverer. John, he is the door by which everyone must enter. Acts, the spirit who dwells in his people, he's a fire of heaven. Romans, he is the grace of God. First Corinthians, 
He is the down payment of what's to come, our sin bearer. Galatians, he is our very life. He is freedom from the curse of sin. Ephesians, the unity of the church, oh glorious treasure. Philippians, the joy of our life, he supplies our every need. Colossians, he holds the supreme position on all things. He is the Godhead tr Trinity. First Thessalonians, our comfort in the last days. Second Thessalonians, our returning king. First Timothy, savior of the worst sinners. Second Timothy, leader of leaders. Titus, the fountain of tr truth. Philemon, and he is our mediator, our faithful pastor. Hebrews, he is the blood of the everlasting covenant. James, he matures our faith, the one who heals the sick. First Peter, our hope in times of suffering. Second Peter, the one who guides us from false teaching. He is our chief shepherd. First John, source of all fellowship. Second John, God in the flesh. Third John, the source of all truth. Jude, protecting us from stumbling, the lover coming for his bride. Oh, revelations. King of kings, Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he is coming again in the one who makes all things new. He is the name above all names. <laughs> Jesus is, was, and now forever. He is the beginning, in the middle, in the end. Jesus knows humanity's past, but chooses to die for humanity anyway. As Jesus was and is in history of this world, so he is in the history of our lives. He is weaving his love and grace into the moments of our lives. My question is this, who is Jesus to you? Is he Lord or is he second best? Have you accepted his free gift of salvation that he died to be able to offer to you? If you have, you are sure to seek in the heavenly banquet. If you have not, why? Why? Jesus wants to be our kinsman redeemer. Are you ready to be liberated from your past? Are you? Then come to Jesus and live. Jesus wants to show you and I the way home. The way to the heart of God. Are you ready to come home?